Welcome, welcome. You are now tuned into the Eat Break Ball podcast. It's your boy Matt Marshall. Got some co hosts today. Our boy Bennett Wolin is back in the building, straight out of California, straight out of Culver City, Cali. Uh, fellow Chelsea fan, we don't get him on as, uh, as often as we'd love to, but I appreciate you coming in. AJ. Yeah, it's been like over a year. Yes, sir. Our, our, our boy Ash Austin reporting in live from Houston, as well as our boy African Portuguese George Blamo. He's actually half working right now. I think you in the gym letting letting people know how to get fit. But I we, we had to jump on this pod today. It's going to be a quick one uh, to discuss one and only thing, the UEFA Super League that we have heard this madness that has popped up. Um, as far as I know, from reports, 12 teams have signed on to create this super league that would essentially replace the Champions League because it would be a midweek competition of the top and most notable clubs in Europe. Um, um, among those is what? Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, Chelsea, Man United, Man City, Arsenal, um, and and so much more. <laughs> Y'all can name the rest. Uh, I Tottenham. Think- Tottenham, Tottenham. We'll <laughs> talk about that. Top. Wait, so so l- l- just explain this to me, Bennett. What do you know? What do you know? What have you read? What have you heard? Um, let, let, let's 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 just start from this. This elite clubs. We got elite six, clubs. Six clubs from England. Three clubs from Spain. Uh, Italy and three clubs from Spain. Yep. Are starting their own league together, and they're going to play each other, and. They're going to shut the door on anybody else playing them. So just more or less, more or less. Right. And just there'll, to- be, there'll be there'll be five. They said right now they're going to have 20 teams with five spots, uh, which would be open to based on performance. But but they have 15 spots that are you cannot be relegated. You cannot. Right. Get F- 15 spots league. are shoe wins and it's based on your, your club's history. So, so before we get to ramifications and all that, let's just talk about that uh, period. As I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the clubs who have actually signed on, so so we know. And 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 let's talk about this. This is about clubs who have a rich history of winning, winning in Europe, a a, a huge recognition worldwide. I, I believe the quote was: first of all, Florentino Perez, Real Madrid's president, is now the founding president of this. You would not you corrupt, would. trash, corrupt and trash, corrupt and trash. <laughs> Says our Cristiano lover slash Real Madrid fan. Uh, president's corrupt and trash, but he's taken over this this thing, and I think uh, the the president of uh, the president of Juve is the vice president in this initiative uh, of this new Super League. But essentially, they want the best teams with the richest histories to come together and create their own league and not be fucking around with the Champions League and having to play teams like Dinamo Kiev or Turkish giants Spartak, like Spartak Moscow. Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, first of all, hold on. Let's let's get that let's get let's get that list up real quick. The Super League list. The teams in the Super League that they that have already signed on. We got Real Madrid, Barcelona, Atletico, like we said, AC Milan, Arsenal, Chelsea, Inter, Juventus, Liverpool, and Man City, and Man United, and Tottenham. Is Tottenham a part of this super club? Like, is Tottenham a super club? They don't have any history. They don't have any, like... It, no, I don't know how they bullied their way in there, but... Okay, so so I guess my first question is how can you how can you kind of try to bully a a league a, wrestle a league away from such a a big team a big league like Champions League and say that we're bringing all the top teams which you brought ninety percent of the top teams like we see all all the rest of these names are huge clubs with huge history but then you have teams like Tottenham maybe signing on you have teams like Arsenal who really haven't been at that ilk even though they they have the history they haven't been at that ilk for what 15 20 years you got shit 
Inter and Milan, who haven't really been of that ilk for a long time. Atletico Madrid, who don't really have a rich history of European winning. Like, if PSG and Bayern don't sign on, which they're hoping to get, because like you said, they're hoping to get 15 fixed teams. Uh, is is this even is this even like worth talking about? Is this even going to happen? Uh, so, so I think effectively you've got you've got um, a situation where um, where basically you, so UEFA wants to wants to expand the Champions League, right? So they 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 want to increase it in twenty twenty four. I think they're adding like four four more teams. So now you're just diluting the pot that really all of the big teams should be in their minds getting more of it so they basically right but, so but, but, it's, clubs, so but it's important to note that they're diluting the pot for the big clubs technically right they want to have more games for the big clubs to to be on these big pay champions league channels so they can get well, more you're money just, you're just splitting you're splitting up the the, the money amongst you're giving the more wider. to the smaller to the smaller guys that i mean why is Bayern playing this random team that no one could point to where it is on a map, right? Right. So, so then, so then these these big clubs come together and they say, "Hey, look, let's let's close this league." They've got several American owners as part of this part of this project. The NFL, the NBA, those are closed leagues. True. The, the revenue streams are pretty consistent, and guess what? If you're an Arsenal, a Tottenham, you are you are more incentivized to jump on early versus a Bayern or PSG. So Bayern or PSG can say, well, let's just see how this plays out. We can look good up front. Right, by not joining. The, and, and by not joining. But if it does gain traction, they will have to join. Yeah, yeah. The, German clubs are, the German clubs are holding out. And they, they have, it's a little bit more complicated for them to join, I think, because of some rule there, like some 50 plus one rule about international ownership so the american influence isn't as isn't as big in germany yeah but who are they going to play if all of these teams go to another league who's bayern going to beat to be the the the, the champions league winner there's going to be no one left good to beat because it's not interesting if you don't beat someone good right right you've got to beat liverpool you've got to beat psg you've got to beat someone of a of a great caliber it's forgettable well, you know beating uh i don't know who's Inter. left west ham yeah west ham you know to win the the champions league is gonna is not gonna hit different it, it, why look, if the, what why do you have to use the team west ham no, he's well, just he's just saying okay. like West, West, Ham West Ham's top five. To be the yeah, West, Ham's West Ham's top four right now. Yeah. So West Ham's potentially going to be the the best team to qualify for next year's yeah. um, Champions League. I uh, nothing against West Ham, but I think <laughs> what you're looking at is if the the current clubs can hold their medal and and do this, it's going to be hard for the other teams not to go through with it. Uh, but you know, FIFA and UEFA are twisting. Right. They're saying you can't play in the World Cup. So, and- so let's talk about that. FIFA and UEFA are are are, are together in this. They're putting the, they're throwing down the hammer and basically saying y- y'all can't play in in these other huge tournaments and huge uh, cups that aren't going away. I.e., the World Cup is the biggest one, and they are saying that they're going to ban the players who will be a part of these teams that would leave for the Super League unless. They unless they stop this nonsense. Is that I mean that's not that's not that's not just a bluff. That's a big flex. I don't know how that can be tied up legally, but that's a big flex. So is this even happening? This is what I'm talking about. I don't like UEFA because this team. The, I feel like the reason why these teams are doing this is because they feel like they're getting robbed by UEFA. UEFA is just taking so much money from these clubs, and they're just trying to say, here, you're guaranteed three hundred million dollars, win or lose. Whatever you win on top of the league is is what you you is your your increase of earning. That's it. Like the way I look at this is it's, it's just they a, get it's money just from Champions League. league. You get money and exposure without, from being in Champions League. I, I, what I what I what I'm trying to see is like what's the difference between like there's a huge difference between West Ham getting in the Champions League and and shit even making it to the knockout round versus Bayern being in Champions League. Like they are every year, and Juve shit, like they were every year for the last nine years. They were 
top the league. So what is what incentive does a Bayern or a Juve have by comparison to a West Ham or a Leicester or, you know, against Moscow or Galatasaray? But conversely, like, how fun is it to see the same team? Now, and, and I say this as a devout FIFA player who only plays with five teams in FIFA and only plays against five teams. But like, how fun is it to only see the same t- shit, 12 teams play each other? Does that take like the sexiness know, I, out of it? I mean, it? I mean, that's American sports, right? I mean, you watch the NBA, you watch the same teams play each other all the time. You do. But um, but knowing that you know uh, the thing the thing about American sports right is the idea is that like you're watching the best players in the world all you know you know NBA is a relatively international sport the other two not so much but like all the great European talents come and play in the NBA so you're seeing the best players in the world uh, you know even if they're in Milwaukee you know Giannis or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the Champions League, yeah, I mean, by the end you are, but, you know, round of 16, those couple sneak in, you know, the group stage, definitely, you're not watching the best. You know, the group stage is pretty automatic, right? We only talk about, like, one, there's usually, like, one group that maybe a big team is going to get right. knocked out, but for the most part, you're like, these two are going on, and these two aren't going on, and it's pretty consistent every, every year. single year. Yeah. Uh, let me stop you right there, though, for a second, because when you talk about NBA and you talk about American sports, you do take the international aspect away from it. And when you do that, you miss stuff like, like, have you ever watched Real Madrid basketball team in your life? Have you ever watched a Turkish basketball league game in your life? No, never. But let me, but Luka Doncic was balling for Real Madrid before he came to the NBA. And if you relate that to soccer, None of us would have seen Mbappe pop on the scene before at least he got to PSG. And Mbappe had something like, what, 30 some, 30, he had like 15 goals in the Champions League for Monaco in, in the, over the course of like a, a year and a half or something like that. So do you miss out on Jude Bellingham's and Erling Haaland's when you don't have that, 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 that depth of, of some of the younger teams that are coming in? Uh... I mean, theoretically, they're saying that some form of European football would continue and the people that want to seek that out would still see those talents. I mean, I don't know what the the disparity is between people who watch Europa League and Champions League. I assume it it's really dependent on if the team you like is in Europa League if you watch it. I I don't think a lot of people watch just the the random games. I mean, the teams are, like, really out there. Yeah. Uh, But... Yeah, I mean, look, this is this hurts this hurts small teams across the board. This is not there's I don't think you can spin it that this is good for this is absolutely bad for small teams that are left out. I mean, even like thinking about the teams that could break into the top four and get Champions League, like that that dream goes away, right? There's this, only five spots for all of Europe to get in this. This is my point, and, and thing. we texted about it earlier a little bit, like. These, this is to protect the Man Uniteds and shit and the Real Madrids and like teams teams that have these great trophies, these this rich history, but like you know might not be making top four. Man, when's the last time Man United made top four? It's been two, three, three years. You know, like uh, last year they made it, but um, yeah. Come on, don't disrespect my team. Like <laughs> but they dropped out. They they got knocked. But you got out knocked out of the yeah. yeah. You got knocked but, out. Of um, league. That's right. I mean. Florentino Perez said today that Real Madrid lost 400 million last year. I don't know if he's lying or not, but he's saying they lost 400 million. They're saying all these teams are losing a lot of money, and they want the the stability of like an American model where the, you don't get relegated. You get the same TV money every, every year. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna control the the TV contracts. You know, it's the it's the American business model, and you've got a lot of American owners who are behind this uh but it uproots everything we're used to so people are very very concerned but the premier league was made in a similar way so you ask yourself yeah and i would imagine champions leagues reform into the way for champion like from the european league but european competition was probably a little bit different to a certain extent too what is your what are y'all's personal opinions on it 
Like, all right, so we so we understand what's going on. Like, do you think this is bad for the little guy and bad for soccer? Or do you kind of follow Florentino Perez in the thought process that this will preserve the longevity of football, you know, as it goes, you know? I think, you know, it's, it's a good conversation starter. Um, I, I think there probably does need to be some reform of the Champions League. I don't think just by adding more participants to any of these tournaments, whether it's the World Cup, the Euros, the Champions League, like you're not adding better teams. You're making it worse. Right. So all that's going to do, I mean, these players are playing a lot of games. They're trekking all over the place to these random places, increasing injuries. You know, is Neymar going to be available for the round of 16? Because he seems to just be getting injured, right? Like, you want to minimize, you want to protect your top players. Well, Neymar's getting but, injured domestically, so shit. He's getting injured domestically, <laughs> but, you know, the, the point is, it's like, it just increases your chances, especially as you're going to all these random places. You already have to do that with the, with the, with the Euros. Yeah. So, yeah. I, think it, I think these big clubs have a point in which it's like, look, we need to, we need to make a league in which it's just the top teams. However, the way that they're doing it is is just probably a little too aggressive. It's very aggressive, especially having these yeah. teams sign on early. Because any I mean, exactly right. It's like you're 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 allowing teams that really aren't top to sign on early, just to be a part of it. Like, I mean, Arsenal, Tottenham. I mean, they have to. Yeah. Or they like because they they can't make it by merit. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, raise your hand. I'll be the first. You know, I'll, I'll sign this this thing. Yeah, Bennett, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the other thing that's happening is they're seeing. I think that I think they don't want there to be any more Man Cities, right? They don't want anybody else to come with a bunch of money and join the party and dilute their chances of, you know going up even more you know there's right. united used to rule the land and then you know chelsea came with money and you know made it a little more difficult you know now city's there too it's pushing everybody down people are missing and they're saying listen we're going to close the door who who's going to spend a lot of money on a big club if you can't push that club into champions league right and, and I and I definitely feel that the like the Man Cities of the world, the PSGs of the world, even I mean Chelsea was early, early days, but I started the model a little bit have have kind of ruined it in that they can come in with these billionaires who will actually pay these outrageous prices that that other clubs are putting on people's heads. Like I just saw something Erling Holland's price is 180 million euros right now. Jude Bellingham's price is. A hundred million euros right now. Yeah, but to yeah. to 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 that point though, um, I mean UEFA has made it more difficult for people to come in and inject FIFA like, fair play sanctions. Yeah, yeah. you can't right? just because pump you money. Have, you have the situation of Monaco where the guy gets divorced, and now the team went from being really rich to selling everyone Straight like immediately. Bankrupt. Right. Yeah. I mean, people are figuring out ways around it though. I mean, cities flexing all this different like weird sponsorship money from various sources i i i i don't know if this is true but i read that they're also talking about a salary cap within this league so they can control player wages um they're really you know, trying to make it an american model yeah I mean, that's what they do right in yeah. america yeah you know especially like baseball where you know you you pay too much for players then you have to get back into the pot and that's redistributed and um but again but again in you know and and half those american owners right they're not just americans they own another team that does this uh, right 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 L the liverpool guy owns the red sox the arsenal guy owns the rams uh it goes on right? yeah um, yeah I, but it's a little different so, in soccer though where you're not just paying salaries like these teams these teams are having to shell out money for the players themselves which the league can't cap, you know, that happens. I don't know that they'll, I don't know that these teams will pay big money for players anymore. Interesting. Because now you're now players you're want in to, the Super League. Right, right. There's less pressure to spend a hundred million dollars to bring someone in to make sure you make Champions League. Now you can probably focus on Building buying projects, yeah. developing them. Yeah. Um, you know, the American leagues are not, you know, you can take time, you know, 76ers, they do a rebuild, right? They don't have to 
turn flip the switch like this, they say, we'll be bad for a couple of years and we'll turn it around. Um, NFL, you can turn around a little bit faster, but NFL's I a bit faster. I, I, I don't know that the, the, the fees that they'll play for for players that they want to keep doing that because it's escalating in a very dramatic no, way. No, it's, it's jumping. I mean, I want to say Cristiano was the highest in 10 years at 90 million at, at when he went to Real Madrid. And it's just ballooned since then. And I guess it's been 10 years since then, but it's just out of control. Like, Cristiano was the best player in the world when he was 90 million. Dollars. You know, now you have yeah, it's, kids. It's, it's, it's gotten very expensive. Yeah. And, you know. That's all right. That broke it after the China deal. Which, which, which one? Then Eto go to China and break uh, Cristiano. See, but that's China different. I mean, China's not competing in the Champions League. China's not even like so. When you when they, you go to like Saudi Arabia or China for these for this these big money, you're going for money. You're going for you as a player. You know, the, the, and these leagues are just helping to advance themselves. I mean, same thing with the MLS, right? Just, you bring a, a. I just think it's hard because like you're going to try to compare it to like the MLB or the NBA or the NFL. That's all in one country. Yes. Like, yeah, they have different different uh, countries, but like, all in all, like, yeah, there's like 32 teams. A, a, yeah, they're constant one country. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I think they're treating this though like they're one unit, and they're saying we're the best, biggest brands in the world, and we actually are relatively close to each other. That we can just. You know, I don't think that they're more spread out than all the teams in the United States from, you know, England <laughs> to Italy to, you know, it's not that far. So no, I think they're saying, I think they're saying, look, we're the biggest brands. We're the best brands. We don't want to dilute it anymore. Like the game is, you know, maybe getting away from us. And now we're going to shut the door and we're going to be very rich. I think the, I think the interesting question though is, the showdown that's going to come right now if they're going to kick the teams out of out of the the world cup out of the champions league this year out of the champions league the champions league has three of those teams are they just going to stop the champions league right now i mean Um, they would lose money they're not they were talking about not forming this league until 2023 yeah what are they going to do for the next couple of years um, does the Premier League say no? Like, there's a lot of factors that are... Right, and, and, and we're seeing politicians, we're seeing governments talking about, it. like, obviously the, the, the British Prime Minister, the President of France, all all coming out against the Super League. Like, I, and I don't know, I don't know what, what, what uh, country benefits the Champions League, you know, gets, or maybe, you know, it's about... Some teams in France getting more money and bringing bringing to their to, to the country's economy if they can get into the Champions League. Um, again, thinking about Monaco's and Nice's and Lille's and things like that. Um, but I, what 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 is, what is the biggest what's the biggest la- backlash that could come from this? Uh, I think it's the to the players, right? Like, yes, as a player, you're just I mean you're hostage to this situation. Like you're gonna leave, you're gonna leave your top team just because you want to go play in the World Cup. Like you're yeah. you're you're in no man's land. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and, gonna and, be weird. and you got to think about the salaries. The World Cup doesn't pay your salary. These clubs pay your salary. Right. right. And these clubs pay the best. You know, like oh, if, if you're gonna throw down and say no, I don't want to play for one of these twelve teams. You're not going to find a lot of money at Bayern. I mean, PSG pays, but after that, you know City what I mean? Pays. Like, you can go to Germany, the, Germ- the Germans don't pay that well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 I do think it, it's, it's going to have to follow them. And that's a difference, too. Like, the NBA is a player's league because it's already set up in this way where nobody gets relegated. You know, you, you can refresh teams, you can move players around. Now, play, and now players have the options to just kind of sit for a couple of years go take a, you know, less money somewhere and join a big team so they can win or, or go sit on a shitty team and ball out and, and get a huge max contract. Like, I, I don't think in any of these situations do the players win out in this, especially if, you know, FIFA and UEFA are just going to kind of swing, swing their hammer and go, well, shit, if you're not going to do this, you're then forget the World Cup. But you're right. I could totally see people just being like, all right, well, then we're not going to the World Cup and suddenly the World Cup just 
falls apart. It's, it's tough. Yeah, that, I, there's a lot of uh, what do you call that kind of showdown? Um, they, uh, uh, Mexican uh, standoff. Kick it, Mexican standoff, right? Yeah. Because who's gonna blink first? Right, right. Because it's, uh, the, all the threats that are going around can't all happen. Yeah, like yeah, these clubs can't be kicked out of all their leagues with the players not playing in the in any sort of international cup. I mean, if none of the players from these big clubs went to the World Cup, what is the World Cup? Who's playing in the World Cup? It's the Olympics probably yeah, at that is. point. Damn, it is the Olympics. Imagine, imagine this, the, the, the players on these clubs right now. Take all those players out of the World Cup. So you're trying to tell me you're going to have a World Cup without Ronaldo. Messi's potentially supposed to go to City without Messi. Without it, it's it's not gonna happen. Yeah. And you're talking about Ronaldo and Messi's last World Cup, probably like yeah. the two greatest players of all time. Yeah. They're not gonna play in this. Like FIFA's not gonna do that. There's no way FIFA's gonna do that. No, nah, there's that would, no way. That would hurt them. Um, Man, and they... and and from pressure from who? I mean, this I don't know that this affects FIFA. UEFA is just probably dialing up FIFA and saying help, help, help. <laughs> um. I mean, listen, I'm on the side of I think the way things were, were good, but um, I don't know that there's any stopping us. But yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're just fans, right? right. Like maybe from Stan and the Glazer family, maybe they're like, shit, we could be making more money. You know, like you know, I was reading the stat, it's like 70 to 80 percent of like the revenue goes to like wages or something like it's like an incredibly <laughs> high number so if you're, if you're if you're not getting if there's no fans in the Trying stadium no one's business. buying boxes yeah yeah they're, they're probably just bleeding left and right yeah i'm sure COVID has really hit them hard i also think the timing did anybody read anything on the timing of this why this i don't know why they did it right now they should have at least let the they let should things have done play the summer, out yeah like, frankly. it just I felt very no random idea. right yeah it was very weird. So did you, especially with three of the teams in the championship? Right, with the three teams. I don't know. I think they were just like, we have to get this out and get ahead of this. Did you see Mar- Jose Mourinho got sacked today? Yeah. There, yeah. there were rumors that he had he had decided not to show up to practice because of this news of the Super League. But that was that was kind of let me that was disproved. let me tell you something. That is that's bullshit <laughs> Mourinho doesn't do that so Mourinho, Mourinho, Mourinho being fired is, is completely isolated is that what we're saying yeah he doesn't give a shit he's probably like ha- he would have been happy because then he's in Champions League without having to get there <laughs> uh, yeah it's sad for him I, don't, I think it's over for him that was probably the last time oh my god nah he's gonna coach and win the World Cup Poland right now. He could his style of play with Portugal would actually with the players they have on Portugal would okay. actually work. If he shores up that bat. defense. That's a good bet. But he's not I mean he's done in he's done in England. There's no more clubs. He's what, run through everything. What about you, Ash? You you want you want to read Jose a eulogy or, or, or are we still is he still the chosen one? The special hey man, one? he hasn't he hasn't he hasn't been to Arsenal yet, so it's probably the last <laughs> not gonna happen. The la- the last stop. I mean shit, as much leeway as y'all are giving Arteta, who knows? Who knows? You're right. It's, God, it's diminishing returns with him, right? I mean like Chelsea delivered a Premier League and then fell off. United, he delivered a Europa League and then fell off. Yep. Uh, Tottenham, he I delivered know. nothing and got fired. Dude, like, but he's one week out from a final. You're not going to wait until he can win a Carabao Cup? If he won yeah, the Carabao Cup, he's going to... before a final? I don't know who does that. That's nuts. Yeah, but that's nuts. They're, the, that club's just going crazy right now. That club is, that is tough. Oh, man. Well, there's there's there, there's a lot, lot to know about this, but I'm glad y'all popped on. We just wanted to get just an understanding of what we know now, and we know. So so just just to confirm... Bennett, you're you're not here for it. Ash, you no, are, no, no, you're not here for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. As a fan, no. No. What about you, George? I mean, I, I, would I be excited to see Barcelona Man U like every like, week? Like, every every week, like it would. It's not even that exciting when they do. Play. It isn't. Like, it isn't. <laughs> so it's like you can't even guarantee me excitement. But maybe in maybe in maybe in a league, this is the last point I'll make about this. Maybe in a league, they won't be so anxious to like grab points and sit back and play defense and try to over like be over tactical. Yeah. Maybe they'll just come maybe, out and play, and that would be fun to maybe, watch. Maybe goals should be like count as ten points instead of one. <laughs> you can't no ties. It's like penalty. Should like just just change really the whole game. Just, 
Exactly. Just accelerate it. Make it a very American sport. Yeah. They could play with like an they, oblong they, ball, and instead of with their feet, they could throw they it. They should throw it. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. You're right. We could do that. All right. All right. Well, like, so, where are we going here? Yeah. No, it, 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 it could get bad. It could get bad. But, but, but stay tuned. More to come. I appreciate y'all hopping on. Again, this is, this is nuts. This is just the nuts in the world of football. Uh, but, but, but we'll keep it locked in, and we'll see how it goes. All right. All right, boys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bennett. Have a good night. Bye. Peace. Peace.